Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the multivariate normal distribution. Today I will explain you how you can find the distribution function of this quantity. Myself Dr. Harish Gar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of applied multivariate statistics and you can see the various lecture related to the bivariate multivariate normal distribution, marginal density functions and many more lecture available in this playlist. You can subscribe my YouTube channel so that you can get your notification in advance. when i upload the next video so what we have discussed in our last lectures you can see in this playlist we have discussed the quadratic form we have described the maximum likelihood estimators and we described the sample mean so what we have discussed if x is my multivariate this x is known as the multivariate normal distribution this small p is called as dimension of the multivariate normal distribution mu is called as the mean and this sigma is called as the covariance or dispersion matrix then we have found that this quadratic form x minus mu transpose will follows the chi square distribution with the degree of freedom p also we have defined the sample mean that is x bar which is again follow the normal distribution multivariate normal distribution with the mean mu and the covariance matrix sigma divided by sample size now based on these two concept today we will learn what will be the distribution of this function that is the n into sample mean minus mu you can see it is look like a similar of this but the only difference is instead of the sample mean x uh, instead of the random variable x it is a sample mean so what will be the distribution of this so it's a very very simple way i can explain you in the next 5 minutes so the question is if x follows the multivariate normal distribution then what will be the distribution function of this quadratic term very simple now it is given that x follows my multivariate normal distribution my target is to find the density function of this quantity what will be the joint density function of this x as we have defined the multivariate normal distribution the pdf of the x is this number make sure whatever the whatever the covariance matrix it's a root of this and it's the inverse of this number now we need a x bar so we already defined the what is the x bar is x bar is my again follow the multivariate normal distribution with the mean mu and the covariance matrix this so can you find the probability density function of x bar again it's a very simple you can define the probability density function again by using this what you can do replace the mu by mu so this is my mu and replace what you can do is you can replace sigma because this is the pdf of the x so you can replace sigma by sigma divided by n so i can replace at this point and at this point so you will get the pdf of the sample mean x bar now my target is to find the distribution of this so let's say i call this is my q then what is your target your target is to find the probability density function of this q how you can find that's again very simple if i start from the moment generating function of the q and if i define some moment generating function of say y fine if both are equal then definitely by the uniqueness property of the moment generating function q has a same pdf as of the y fine so let's start with the moment generating function of the q how you can define the moment generating function it is of this form f of x into dx but since q is dependent on the x bar so this is my x bar i can substitute the value of the q at this point and the probability density function of x bar now now you can see that uh, i have substituted i can return this quantity only this quantity as sigma inverse divided by n inverse that is a n so this number is my this quantity now you can take because exponentials are same so it will be n common it will be 1 minus minus common or 1 minus of 2t into this form fine i can take this value common n exponential sigma inverse common you will get as 1 by 2 and it is my t so it is 
what will happen it is my 2t minus 1 over 2 i can take minus half common it's 1 minus 2t now if again what is the pdf of this so because we all know if it is a pdf if f is my pdf then the integration of the pdf should be 1 so what i can do whatever this quantity what is the pdf form is i have to multiply by this quantity of sigma inverse or sigma and i can multiply by this quantity that is i can multiply and divided by this quantity you can see it is a sigma by n inverse it is a sigma by n root so whatever the quantity of this i can adjust this n to be sigma by n now you can see 1 over 2 pi root of n into this value fine so you can see i can clear this screen firstly so you can see what is the value of this can you identify the value of this so if this is my pdf what is the integration of this quantity because it's a pdf so this value will be one now you can see this number will be my one so final answer will be the remaining thing is one over these two quantities now it's a power of the root n i can combine them and i can take this value to be of n by 2 because remember this is the determinant so what is the determinant of a if a is my n cross n so it will be alpha raised to power n of this now since sigma is my sigma is my p cross p matrix so what is the determinant of this it's a raised to power p into half and then i can combine these two values it is sigma by n into sigma by n inverse now this value will be cancelled out that's the identity matrix so this answer will be 1 minus 2t raised to power p by 2 now do you remember that which what is which distribution has the moment generating function yes it's a chi square distribution so this is the moment generating function of the chi square so we start from the moment generating function of q it is ending upon the moment generating function of the chi square p so therefore q what is that q will be my chi square p distribution that means this value is my chi square p distribution look at the one numerical example if x1 xn that is x60 with a random sample of size 60 fine then which is my four variate normal distribution that means x follows my multivariate this mu and sigma that means that dimension of the variable is my 4 p is equal to 4 having the mean is mu covariance matrix sigma then the distribution of the x bar so we all know what is the distribution of the x bar np mu sigma divided by n so what is the p p is my 4 mu is my mu sigma is my sigma what is the n n is my 60 so the right answer the first part is mu divided by mu into sigma by this this value because this is my x1 this is only the first quantity as we have defined what is that what is the distribution of this x minus mu it follows chi square p distribution make sure mu is the mean of this quantity and sigma is the covariance matrix of x now in this case this is the x1 what is the mu because these are my random sample so mu that means that means x1 will follow the multivariate normal distribution with the mu and sigma what is my p in this case p is my 4 so therefore this value will follow my chi square p distribution so what is the value of the p p is my 4 look at the third case now this is my x bar fine now once it's x bar as i defined in this lecture this again follows my chi square p distribution so what is the p p is again my 4 so this number is also my chi square 4 distribution look at the last case now in this case this is my s what is the s is that is a sample mean sorry sample covariance matrix that means we are using the estimator of this now 
what is the n n is my 60 which is greater than greater than of the p so therefore i can say this number x bar minus mu as inverse x bar minus mu which is approx follows again the chi scale distribution p because n is my greater than greater than of the p that is for the large sample it again follows my chi scale distribution p so that means chi scale distribution 4 is the right so such kind of the question will definitely ask in the csr net or in the gate mathematics as well as the statistics examinations so you must remember this is the simplest way you can learn about this i hope you can like my video as well we will see the next lecture how you can find the unbiased estimator of this covariance matrix till then you can like comments with comment on my video share this video with your friends best of luck students happy learning